I traded CSGO skins for one week and made dollars. The CSGO economy is big. In total, there are around 800 million CSGO skins with an average value of 25 US dollars. So in this multi-billion dollar industry, it is easy to see that CSGO skins have become more than just some pixels. So it is not a surprise too, that people start collecting, investing, or in my case, trading with these items. You can trade for fun, you can trade to have cool looking skins, or you can trade to make profit. Although people always overestimate how much profit you can make. Hey, I am Neon and I am a semi-professional CSGO trader since 2015. And I am back with another episode of my trading adventure. So let's get right into it and see what deals I found over the last week and especially how much profit I made within this time. As my last video had around 500 views, this week I am also giving away a Glock 18 Bullet Queen. To enter just follow these 4 steps and you have a chance of winning. Also don't forget to ring the bell and enjoy the video. Thanks! Day 1 We start up day 1 with a kind of a special offer. My Polish friend here had some Shadow Daggers worth around 70 US dollars. He had a case worth around 30 US dollars and he had 20 dollars in his Steam wallet and he wanted to trade this for a better knife. So Steam prices and cash prices are around 35% apart. So if somebody offers you his Steam balance, which takes 7 days to trade because he has to buy skins on the Steam market and then trade you them, you can calculate it at around 66% of the Steam market price. So in this case, his $20 on Steam come up to around $13.3 on buff. So of course I can offer for that, but the problem is that it will take days until he can trade his items. So I say I can do that, but I can't offer him something right now because I trade around 5 to 10 times a day and the items I promise him now will most likely be gone when he can trade. So I told him he should take some time to get the most out of his $20 on Steam and after they are tradable we can do a deal. Then there is our first offer. We see that Wyden Totti offers a souvenir package and some stickers from a Huntsman knife freehand in field tested condition. Like you may be seen, the Huntsman has a really low float, but it doesn't add that much at the new lower tier knives. So at first glance, this looks like a really good deal. I mean, we are getting stickers, these are a little bit harder to trade, but $4 overpay plus, you see the souvenir package is not even valued because there are no listings on buff at the moment. So we're gonna check how much the souvenir package is worth and also check how much the stickers actually sell for. Stickers on buff can sometimes be inflated because when you're going by listening price and some collector buys 50 of these to get some crafts done, the price is probably higher than it will really sell. So we are going to buff and see how much these stickers actually sell for and especially see how much we can get for the souvenir package. I see that the stickers sell for way less than it, they are listed for and my plugin valued them it, but the souvenir package kinda equalizes that and we get about $5 overpay on this trade. Next up there is Crydy offering for my Nomad Knife Nightstripe. He's offering his emerald gloves, but you see that he wants around $7 overpay. So we send an offer back to let him know what we can do. The next trade here is from Matthewmatic and he's offering his Navaha Ruby for our Nomad Knife Fade. The Nomad Knife Fade is a 92% fade, so it's a little bit above market price. But you see, also without this good fade, he's asking for around $150 overpay. So we will send him an offer back and tell them that this was way too low and he should maybe reevaluate his prices. And a few months later, Crydy is back with another offer and he's asking for even more. So we are just sending him another offer back and hoping that he sees that he's asking for too much. At the end of the day, we got a really good offer. You can see here, this guy offers some play skins and Navaya knife Boreal Forest for our Ursus Knives of Hyrule Mesh, counting up for around 4% overpay, which is a quite fair and good deal for us. So we're gonna accept that and call it a day. Day 2 starts with a really good offer. Somebody offers his AK Jaguar and a Desert Eagle Crimson Web, which you can see has some really good stickers. Normally I wouldn't accept this trade right away because my Empress has a low float and therefore it would be a kind of small loss for me. But the $33 in stickers I have on the Desert Eagle Crimson Web really equalizes that and this is a okay and good deal for me. So I will accept that and I start with a small overpay on the first trade today. Next up, there is somebody without a name so I can't call him here. 
He was really open and he said that he most cares about the Empress, the Neo Noir and the Nightmare. So he wants some play skins and the value is really good. But what he doesn't have noticed, I would think so. A short tip here, if somebody sends you a trade for a good pattern or low flow skin, at first glance, please don't think that they noticed what they have done. If somebody sends you a trade for your blue gem, before you flame them what low baller they are, please just tell them that this is a blue gem because most people don't realize that. Because you see the M4 is a 0.001 float and the orb is a 0.005 float. They don't go for too much, but it still adds some dollars and would be a little bit under my percentages. The problem this guy had is that he had disabled that I can send him a counter offer. So I will decline that offer and just add him so I can send him a good deal then. And a few moments later he accepted me and also asked how he could enable the counter offer so I explained that to him and sent him offer where he gets some more play skins and I get the value I'm looking for. Few moments later he accepted the trade so we can celebrate some profit and also being the proud owner of a Star Trek Desert Eagle print stream in a good field tested condition. The last trade we got on that day was from Noodle Chef. He was offering his op pink DD pad in factory new condition. But the problem is with these factory new pink DD pads, they are really rare, but the demand is not that high. And you see my knife has a low float, so this would be around $15 overpay on my side. And because we don't want to take his play skins or his gloves, we're gonna send him an offer back asking for a lot of his glove cases. And shortly after he sent us an offer back offering a little bit more, but still way too less. And he was referring to his Dragon Law sticker on the orb. The Dragon Law sticker is worth a little bit, it's worth around $9, but it won't equalize what we are losing on this trade, especially with the low float on my knife. So I sent him an offer back, explaining my situation and telling him that I can only do that. In the end, he declined my counter offer, but you have to live with that. And we go on to day three. Day three starts with some trading on some trading sites. I was going through some trading sites and I realized that my Bowie knife Sapphire has a really good price on a trading site. So we're gonna see what deals on the site we can find and in the end trade our Bowies for all of these items. So in the end our Bowie knife Sapphire was worth around $815 and with the deals we could find we got about $900 in items. That's around 10% overpay and a really good deal. Next one, and this is a kind of special one. A guy named Collector is offering his Glock Gamma Doppler Phase 4. And he's asking for around $9 overpay. I'm assuming he haven't seen the low float on my orb. So we're gonna send him an offer back saying that this is too much and say how much we can do. And shortly after we got an answer from him. And he said that we should check the phases and their respective prices because he said that his offer was pretty good. In my opinion, it is not, but what the problem was, and you will see that later, that he is using Steam prices to price his items. And some items in the offer, for example, the P90 leather, because it's so rare, it says on buff quite rarely and has the problem that it is priced quite similar on Steam and buff. But as buff prices are a little bit lower normally, we get a kind of difference here if one is using Steam prices and one is using buff prices. So we will send him offer still back and saying that our offer is around this because he was clearly overvaluing his uh, Glock, at least on buff, what I can say. A phase four minimum wear goes for around $14.15 on buff. So this is still a big overpay for us. He again didn't check the float of my M4. And the problem here again is that he is using Steam prices. So we get a difference here and he will always think that I am lowballing him, although I'm just offering him buff prices. So I sent an offer back explaining what I calculated and why I think this is a fair offer and why I can't do the offer he sent me. And he kind of instantly sent a quite friendly offer back saying, hey, I respectfully disagree with you and have found another buyer. And this is one lesson everybody has to learn. You can't agree with everyone. And if somebody doesn't want to give you the thing that you want or has another opinion, even though you think it is stupid, it is okay to say, hey, this is your opinion, this is my opinion. We disagree, it's okay, go our way and leave that on. And he started respectfully, but one day later he sent me this. For your information, I got 25 worth of skins, Steam Dollar, in exchange for the Glock. I like the hustle, but your offers are low as legit 30% under pay. And yeah, this is again, he, he is just using Steam prices. I'm using buff prices. In my opinion, I'm right because buff has a higher volume and therefore the prices are more accurate. 
he's using other platform we disagree but sending offer like this is in my opinion just childish so you just have to decline the offer if you regularly receive offers from this guy just block him and move on I got some more offers which I don't cover here, but GS Trading sent me an offer for my op pop-up. Again, I don't think that he's seen this little low float and he's offering really low items, but I normally accept these at a little bit of higher overpay. So we explained that the AWP is a low float and you can't do that, but we sent him a similar offer back because this guy is clearly just getting rid of his lower skins. And we are offering him our Max 7 for his 5 low items. And short time later, he accepted the deal and we got some low items with a little bit of profit. Then I got a little bit of a special offer. Somebody sent me an offer and said I should add him, he wants to talk. And normally people add me to want trading advice or something which I don't give out because too many people add me, I just give out trading advice to my Patreons. You can find the link in the description below. But this guy wanted something odd. He wanted to borrow a knife from me and in security he wants to give his wildfire. So he said, I give him a $40 knife, he gives me his $40 wildfire and after 7 days we trade that back. But if you think of that, I'm a trader, so I want to have something in exchange and if I just trade my knife for the wildfire and trade it back, I just have an item stuck for around 16 days which I can't trade. So I said I can't do that, I have nothing from that and if he adds a little bit of profit, I take 2.5%, so he adds 2.5% to that deal, we can of course do that. But at first he didn't understand and in the end he didn't want to do it. So I kept my knife for now. And the last offer for the day was from Headliner and he was a really friendly and cool guy. And he offered a lot of items and his Stat Trek Nomad Knife Fate for my Stat Trek Skeleton Slaughter Mini Mora. The offer he sent me was really good but it was a big downgrade and for that it was a little bit too low. So they sent him a counter offer bad saying that this is what I can do. And in the end we agreed and I got a Stat Trek Nomad Knife Fate and a lot of play skins for my Stat Trek Skeleton Slaughter and a little bit of overpay. A short tip here, if you have friendly people that are reasonable and they argue and they discuss with you and they don't get angry or anything, please honor that. Plus wrap them or their profile or just say them that this is really cool what they are doing because in my opinion it is kind of rare nowadays and we really want to get positive vibes into the community. So if you see somebody doing it, Please support that. Day 4 started quite badly. We got around 4 offers which were okay but nothing worked for us. So I sent offers back but they always declined them. So we had a little bit of a dry streak until we got this offer. Arti offered his slingshot gloves field tested with a 0.26 float which where float adds a lot of value for our 0.22 omegas, a stat track, flip knife, black laminate and two play skins. And in the end, this was one of the best deals we did in this week. It is quite rare that you get steals like this. And in the end, this summed up to around $80 overpay. Day 5 starts with the best example of why you should double check your prices. This guy was offering his play skins and his knife for my shadow daggers and he said he's using the same extension as I am and he said that he's overpaying 6 euros. And if you see on the top right, the extension says I'm overpaying 6 euros. But the problem is that he's using the classic CSGO trader price, which is, I think, an average price of the Steam community market. But I'm using buff prices and we go by buff prices. This deal is not a good deal for me. So I explain the situation and tell him that and say that I can't do the offer like this. After that, Grubo offered his Motogloves POW and his field tested butterfly freehand for my Star Trek Fashion Knife Sapphire. It was an even deal at first glance, but I see that his freehand has a really low float, which adds a good amount of value on buff. So therefore we're gonna accept the deal and go on with a good profit on that day. So on one of the last days, Ramirez offered us a config gold sticker for our Teco gold sticker. You can clearly see that my sticker goes for more and we will send him an offer back explaining the prices and why we think that and see what he thinks. I offered him my phase 4 gut knife doppler for the sticker so I sent him the value and he said nah he doesn't want to take that and we'll find someone else. I wished him the best of luck and we split our ways. Two more people wanted to trade something but their items were trade logged so we kinda fixed the deal but we said let's fix the deal when everything is tradable. Day 6 starts with a big offer. Smoke Ninja offers his gold arabesque 0.18 float a stat track 
kill confirmed of a crown sticker and a statue well worn flip knife rust coat for my 0.004 ruby flip knife and an AK with good stickers. And this trade was a really would be a really big loss for me. First, I don't accept sticker crafts at first glance, but we could replace that. But that offer was around $300 overpay on his side because low float rubies don't sell that often. But if a collector wants that, he pays a big price for that. And in the end, I traded this flip knife ruby for around 1,900 US dollars in items. So his offer was really not that much. And the problem was he was overvaluing it a bit in my opinion because the flip knife doesn't sell for 188 US dollars. On Steam it will sell for around 150 and on buff it has only sold three times but I think it would go for around 90 dollars to 100 dollars. So he was really overvaluing that and I sent him the info. I, I made a mistake there. I valued it that his offer was around 500 dollars too high but in the end it was around 300 dollars. It was a mistake of mine, but I said that his offer was still way too low and I couldn't do that. And in the end, I got around 1,900 US dollars for that knife. So my calculation with the price was quite correct. So we are on the last day and this is also the day I'm cutting this video. So this is not the full day, I have to admit that. Simon offered his Amphibious Gloves Battle Scarred for my M9 Slaughter in field tested condition. If you go to buff, his gloves sell for around 115 US dollars. My knife sells for around 330 US dollars. So I said that I can't offer him his knife because the ads he has in his inventory are not worth enough. So we sent some offers back and forth and in the end I added him and explained that I can't do that because I take 2.5% and I don't accept sticker crafts and the sticker crafts he had would be too low. So I explained why I can't do that and we didn't agree on a deal in the end. So the week is over and now we want to calculate everything together to see how much profit we made. This was a really lucky and good week and in this one I made, roll the drums. $237.86 US dollars. But before you guys now quit your job and all want to become full time CSGO trader, keep this in mind. I have a CSGO inventory worth about 20,000 US dollars, have over 7 years of experience and I invested a lot of time into trading and finding those deals. So I can tell you, if you invested the time I used getting that profit and getting the experience to trade like that into working a normal job, you probably would have made more than that. So with this end note, I think this sums the video up really good. Don't forget to join the giveaway. I am Neon and I see you guys in the next one.